Hi everyone, I said I would uh, do a quick video to solve these questions that we had up in the presentation today for energetics. Um, and so this shouldn't take too long. I'm going to go through these relatively quickly. Uh, and if you know, if you need to, you can you can scroll back and, and get to um, any of any of the work if I go a little bit too fast. But I think this will go. I think this will be pretty straightforward stuff. So the first question. So how much work is required to lift a one liter bottle of water one meter high? Well, um, a liter of water is a thousand milliliters, and a milliliter of water is a gram of water, so the mass is a thousand grams. That's not proper units. The proper units for uh, mass are kilograms, and 1,000 grams is one kg. Okay, and, and I'm going to lift it a height of one meter. And um, and G is 10 meters per second every second. Okay, so this one here, the work that I do is just force times distance. And it's the force against the gravitational field. So it's mg, that's the weight of the water bottle, m times g, 1 times 10. So that water bottle weighs 10 newtons. And I lift, it, I lift it to a distance of one meter. So that's the height. I'm going to write it as y because that's the, that's the height I lift it to. So the, the work that I do is just the weight times the, the, the vertical displacement. The weight is 1 times 10 is 10 newtons times one meter. That would take 10 joules. And then it says a sort of a uh, second part to that question. What if we lift it 10 meters high? Well, then this y just becomes a 10 meter, right? That becomes uh, not a 1, but a 10. And 10 times 10 would be 100 joules. So, you know, if this is A, I don't label them as A and B, but if that's A and B is, is, is just a factor of 10 bigger, because that 1 is not a 1, it's a 10. It's lifted 10 meters high. That'd be uh, 10 newtons of weight times 10 meters of height. That would require 10 times more work, 100 joules. So there's number one. After being lifted of a height to one meter, does the water bottle have any energy? Can it do work? Well, two. Yes, it has energy. Gravitational PE. PE, gravitational. Or, in university physics, we often refer to uh, stored energy as U. So you might see U of gravity, U gravity. Right? That's stored energy, PE. Uh, Potential energy, stored energy. Right? So it has gravitational PE. And how much work can it do? Can it do work? Well, yeah, it can do work. Right? If, if this is the tabletop and that's the water bottle you lifted, right? if you dropped that onto I don't know, something, if you drop that onto something that can move, or you know, here's an egg. <laughs> if you drop that onto the egg, can it do work on the egg? Sure, it can. Force times distance on the egg. How much work can it do? Well, it's equal to the amount of energy it has. So the work it can do, if that's the one meter drop, the work it can do is 10 joules of work because it has 10 joules of PE. Number three, how much work does it take to stop a 100 kg skateboarder traveling at five meters per second? Okay, well, um, this is probably a good point to, to uh, derive what KE is, where KE comes from and uh, especially for those who didn't see it last year. But we often will, um, very often, will analyze how much work something can do and refer to that as the amount of energy it has, right? So how much work can a moving object do in general? Well, force times distance. Okay. Where force, uh, let's, let's invoke Newton's second law, F equals m times a. So we get m times a times d. Now, the next step is to solve the third kinematic equation. v squared is the initial squared plus twice the acceleration times the change displacement. Solve this for a. So we subtract the v naught squared and we divide by 2 delta x and we get v squared minus v initial squared over twice the change in displacement. And we make a substitution here for A. We put this right there for A. 
So we get the statement. How much work can something, how much work does it take to say speed something up? Well, m times a times d, right? It depends on you know, the mass of the thing, the rate of acceleration, and, um, and the displacement. So we say work equals f times d times uh, f times d, which is m times a times d, which is m times a v squared minus v initial squared over twice x times displacement, which I'm going to call here displacement, x. So x over 2x is 0 0.5, is 1 half. So the, so, so the work it takes to, say, speed something up to a given speed is going to be equal to the amount of energy it has. And the work it takes is, is, is denoted here, the work it takes is m times a times uh, displacement, which is, and x over 2x is, is half, so there's the x over 2x, and then it becomes m and quantity v squared minus v initial squared. Now I just distribute the 1 half m to each of those, and I say work done to say speed up a car uh, is equal to 1 half its m v squared minus 1 half its m v initial squared. So this is the this is the this is the final state minus the initial state. And so for example, what if it starts from rest? Well then the initial state is zero and the work it takes to get it up to speed is one half mv squared. That is the amount of work it takes to accelerate something from zero up to some given velocity. That's the amount of work required. So that is equivalent to the energy it has. So this is delta mv here, delta uh, delta ke. Sorry, I meant to say delta ke. So so, oops. So work is equal to the change in the one half mv squared, and in this case, the change of the one half mv squared is just the final one half mv squared. If we talk about starting from rest, so 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 you know how much work does it take to to speed something up from rest? It takes this much work, one half m times v squared. And so that's the amount of work it takes to get up to speed. So that is the amount of energy that it has. So we refer to that as that quantity, that one half mv squared, we refer to that as kinetic energy. So what is kinetic energy? It's one half mv squared. Right? At any given moment, the Ke of an object is one half its mass times its velocity squared. Okay, so let's go back to the question. Let's go right back to the question. How much work does it take to stop a hundred kg skateboarder traveling at five meters a second? Well, it takes exactly as much work as the skateboarder has energy, right? So where are we at here? Number three. The skateboarder has kinetic energy. What kind of energy does the skateboarder have? Kinetic energy, one half m v squared. So the Ke of the skateboarder is one half of 100 kgs. Did I say five? Five meters per second squared. So we've got, um, well, five squared is five times five is 25. So this would be about, what, 1250, I believe. Ke is, well, 100 times 25 would be 2500 and half of that, yeah. That's right, um, is 1250 joules. So the skateboarder has 1250 joules of kinetic energy buzzing along. So how much work do you have to do? Well, you have to do a negative 1250 joules of work. And then you'll bring the skateboarder's kinetic energy to zero. How fast is a rock, is a rock to drop? How fast is a dropped rock going the moment before impacting the ground below if it's dropped off a cliff? 42 meters high. Of course it's 42 meters high. Uh, where are we at? Number four. I think we did one just like this in class. I forget. I think we did. Here's a rock. The cliff is 42 meters high, and this is a conservation of energy problem. Yeah, we did speak about this in class. If I, if I can identify the energies, right, right here it's going really fast, it's got a lot of velocity, right here it's got no velocity, but it's got height, 
right? So I, if I can identify the energies, let's identify the energies and name them. This has U gravitational. This has gravitational PE. This has kinetic energy, KE or K. Okay. Well, I don't know how fast it's going to be going yet, but I do know that in the end that this value is going to be the same as that value, that they're equal to each other, that the amount of energy in the closed system is going to stay constant, neglecting air friction, the energy will stay constant, but it will change forms <clears throat> from gravitational PE into, into energy of motion. So I set them equal to each other, and I say gravitational PE is equal to kinetic energy. Here's the way we say it often when we're just learning it. <clears throat> PE grav is equal to KE. This means the same thing. Okay, so MGY is equal to and turns into 1 half M V squared. Um, and again, this speaks really nicely to the fact that the mass doesn't matter. Whether it's a rock or a heavy rock or a small steel ball or a brick, you know, it's going to, it's going to have the same velocity at the end. I don't like that. That's a fraction, and fractions, you know, they can get messy. So let's multiply by 2, multiply by 2, and I get 2gy equals v squared. I want the velocity, so I take the root of both sides. The velocity is 2gy, root 2gy, sorry. The velocity is root 2gy. Well, that seems kind of nice and straightforward. 2 times 10, 2 times 10 meters a second squared. Technically, that's a negative, but so is the displacement. It goes negative 42 meters down, right? So um, we've got uh, 420 times 2, that's root 840. Root 840 meters squared per second squared will be the velocity. And I don't know the root of 840. It's something just shy of 30, but let's find out for sure. Root of 840. Root of 840. is 28.98, let's call it 29. V is 29 meters per second. That's an energy conservation problem. I identified the energies, and then I wrote them as being equal to each other, and then I wrote, um, I wrote the equation. What is PE grav? It's mgy. What is kinetic energy? 1 half mv squared. I set them equal to each other and solve for the unknown. And I got 29 meters per second. Okay. Uh, now we just have to go to the next problem, which is right here. Oops. Here we go. Next problem. Okay, so this is a spring problem. A spring-loaded gun. Um, a spring-loaded toy dart gun. You do work to compress a spring in a toy dart gun. You press tendons with tendons of force and compress the spring six centimeters. How much work did you do? Oh, okay. Well, I did work of force times distance. But put your distance in proper units, meters, 0.06 meters, and 10 times 0.06. I didn't do much work now, did I? I did 0 0.6 joules of work. Where did I get all that energy? B, from all those cookies. That's where I got that energy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even kidding. My goodness, I really need... Never mind. Okay, here we go. Keep going here. Um, what's the spring constant of the spring? Well, gosh, I don't know, but we'll probably figure this out. C, because that spring has energy in it, and the energy in the spring is equal to the work that I did. Okay, Let's do a quick derivation. What is the spring equation? Gosh, I don't remember, but um, that's okay because I can still think, and work is force times distance. So again, if I analyze how much work is done to compress this spring, well, then I can make a general statement about how much energy is stored in a spring. So, let's see. Force times distance. Well, you know, we have to go back and invoke Hooke's Law here, and Hooke's Law is that the spring constant is force per stretch. All right, so for some of you who haven't had AP1 yet, if a spring is hanging like that, right, 
And then I come along and I hang a 10 newton weight on it so it stretches out some. I hang a 10 newton weight, there it is. 10 newton, a 10 newton weight from it. And let's just make life nice and easy and say that the spring stretched from there to there. So the stretch is we'll call x, change in x, change in displacement of the spring. Let's just make our life easy and call it, I don't know, um, 10 centimeters. 0.1 meters. Okay, so you know the k value of the spring would be the force per the stretch. Okay, well 10 newtons stretched it a tenth of a meter. So this would be a 10 newton spring divided by 0.1 meters, 10 centimeters, and 10 over 0.1 is 10 times 10. That's 100 newtons per meter. What does that mean? That means if you had a spring of this stiffness that could actually stretch a full meter, it would take 100 newtons to stretch it a full meter. That's all. If you pull with 50 newtons, it'll stretch half a meter. And if you pull with 25 newtons, it'll stretch a quarter of a meter. And if you pull with 10 newtons, it'll stretch a tenth of a meter. 100 newtons will stretch it a meter. That's, so, so, so if it had a higher value, that'd be a stiffer spring, it'd be harder to stretch. 250 newtons to stretch it a meter, or 1,000 newtons to stretch it a meter. Those are higher K values for stiffer springs. So this is Hooke's law, right? Uh, f over x. Right? If we solve it for f, we get f equals K times x. Now technically, um, technically that's a negative because, because the force um, exerted uh, uh, on the object is opposite the force on the spring, but let's not go. Let's not let's not worry too much about that right now. I just want to substitute the k times x in for that f, and the work is equal to. So, so in general, the work to compress a spring is force times distance. So in general, the work to compress a spring is k times x. I'm going to pull the same trick I did a minute ago. Uh, k times x times distance or displacement, which can also be stated as x. Okay, um, this is um, I'm going to speak to a complication in one second. So, 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 you know, the maximum. This is so. So this is um, this is the maximum force. F max is k times x, right? And if it's if it's if it's when it's not fully stretched, right? Uh, x is a lesser number, and so f is a lower number. The k value stays constant for a given spring, right? But so 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 really, what we should be talking about here? So this is this is force, you know, this is force maximum, k x x, which is k, which can be stated as k x squared. That is. Um, That's actually not quite right, and I'm not going to go redo the whole video out of embarrassment or something. But the thing is, the force varied from zero up to its maximum. Right? When you were compressing, you know, this toy dart gun, when you when you first compressed it, I should have drawn a. a when I draw a quick picture, um, it often keeps me from um, making making little errors like this. But let me just backtrack for one sec. So there it is, uncompressed, and then a moment later we compress it. So it's like this, right? So, so how much work can it do? Well, you see, when it when it when it releases and it shoots this little dart, when it releases, at first it's pressing with full force, F max. But then once the spring is fully extended and the and the dart is flying away, right at, right at the end of the push, the F is zero. So at the beginning of the push, it's the full k times x. It's the full k times x for the beginning of the push. And at the end of the push, the f is, is 0. And as the spring extends, the force gets less and less and less, right? So, so the force actually varies from k, from k times x down to 0. Right? This force actually varies from k. So we should do average force here. Right? This force actually varies from k times x down to 0. So, so um, I kind of want to just do this and, and say the work goes 
from a full kx down to zero, so the average force is one half k times x. The maximum value is k times x, the minimum value is zero, so the average push on the dart as the spring extends varies from the full push of kx to, to no push, zero, and so the average is full is right between the full push and the zero is, is right between k times x and zero, and what's right between k times x and zero is one half of k times x. So really what I should be saying here is that the work is equal to the average force times the displacement. I'm calling, now I'm calling distance displacement here. And the work is, is equal to the average force, which is one half k times x, times the displacement. The work is one half kx squared. That's how much work a springy thingy can do in general. And so we call that elastic potential energy. The energy stored in elastic materials is 1 half kx squared. And so since that's the amount of work it can do, that's the elastic potential energy. And we often write it like U E L equals 1 half k times x squared. Sorry about that bit of confusion here. I, I started going without a diagram. And the diagram always helps me catch silly things like this. So I hope you don't. I hope you understand the backtrack here. But um, if not, just rewind and listen to it. I, I, I feel like I made sense once I got on the right track. Okay. So 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 that now enables us. That's just a derivation, right? So A is 0.6 joules. B is from all those cookies. C is. C is. C is. I need a new piece of paper. Hold on. Here we go. C is, what is the spring constant of the spring? Well, now we know that u elastic is 1 half kx squared. And we know that I did 0.6 joules to compress the spring. So 0 0.6 joules is the energy stored in the spring. And that equals 1 half k times x squared. Right off the bat, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And I'm going to write 1.2 joules equals... Um, I'm just going to write equals, equals, I'm going to write 1.2 joules. I'm going to do two steps here. I'm going to multiply by 2, and I'm going to divide by x squared. Divide by 0 0.06 squared. Those are 0 0.06 meters squared. And that equals the k value of the spring. So then you just pull out your handy-dandy calculator, and you uh, turn it on. Clear. And I got 1.2 divided by 0 0.06 squared. I've got a k value of 333. Can springs do work? Yes, they can. They can store energy, right? And, and um, I can think of some other examples, little wind-up toys that walk across desktops and um, clocks that you have to wind. And the old watches that I used to wear when I was your age that you had to wind up and stuff like that. A lot of, a lot of um, springs are used to store energy a lot. A bow and arrow, a bow stores energy. In, in, a, in an elastic material, etc. Okay, if the dart has a mass of 45 grams, how fast will it go when released? Well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do this to keep my head straight. There's the little toy gun, and when the dart is what in the gun, that's the situation before, and then a moment later, after the the toy gun is fired and the little dart. It, the, the spring has extended itself, and, the, and there goes the dart. It's got some velocity that way. Okay, it's moving along. And um, what you do is you say this is the before picture, this is the after the event picture. The energy here should equal the energy here. And then you identify the energy. Okay, well, this is spring energy. So this is U elastic. And that turns into, let's see, that thing is moving now. The spring doesn't have energy anymore, but the dart does. And that is now turned into kinetic energy. And then I say, hey, do I know what those are? And I say, yeah, I do. It's 1 half kx squared is equal to 1 half mv squared. Oh, we don't even have to get this complicated because we already have the joules, right? We, it's, so we know this value. We don't even have to write that. That's 0 0.6 joules is equal to 1 half mv squared. I'm right. going to take it up here so I don't have to go to another piece of paper yet. And um, multiply by 2, divide by m. 
So 1.2 joules divided by the mass. What did I say that was? Uh, 45 grams. 0 0.045 kilograms equals V squared. So velocity will be the root of 1.2 over 0 0.045 is 26.7 meters squared per second squared and my velocity is just north of 5 meters per second. What is it really? It doesn't matter. Um, uh, when I say 26.7, 5. 5.2. 5.2 meters per second. Okay. Again, the approach is identify the energies, name them, and set them equal to each other, we had a good situation here because we already knew that number on that side from how much work was done. How about this? If shot straight up, how high will it go? Well, again, so I, I, I'm, I'm going to stop trying to draw too well. Not that I, not that I do. I'm just going to draw this, though. Right. So here's the compressed spring, and here's that little dart. And you say to yourself, what kind of energy does it have? Well, it has, it has U elastic. But in fact, again, we're in the situation where we know it's 0.6 joules. So we're in pretty good shape here. And then after, after the event, this, this, the second part of the event is the spring extends out, boom, and the dart rises to some maximum height where its velocity is zero. It's at its maximum height. Okay, so identify the energies. This had spring energy, and now... Let's see, what kind of energy is here? Is it kinetic energy? No, it's not moving. Spring is unloaded. Oh, oh, it's up high, and it's got mass. It's gravitational PE. So this is PE gravitational up here, or U gravitational up there. And guess what? They're equal. The 0 0.6 joules is equal to the gravitational potential energy. Oh, I know what gravitational PE is. It's mgy. 0 0.6 joules equals mgy. Okay. Well, I want to know how high it goes. So I just solve for y by dividing by weight, m times g. So y equals 0 0.6 joules over the thing's weight of 0.45 newtons. Okay, I just made a slight jump there. But 45 grams was stated. That's 0.045 kgs, right? And if that's m times g down there, right? m times g is 0.045 times 10. 0.045 kgs times 10 meters a second squared. And 0.045 times 10 is 0.45 newtons. So this thing weighs 0.45, about a half a newton. And 0.6 over 0.45 is, I don't know, 1.2 or something. 0.6 over 0.45 is 1.3. How high does it go? 1.3 meters high, if you shoot it straight up. Again, I'm, I'm recognizing energies, naming them, and then setting them equal to each other, and uh, solving the problem there. And the last problem is, if, if it's shot horizontally from 1.5 meters, how far will it go? Well, I wrote that in the spirit of the AP writers because they always turn everything into projectile motion in the last question. It seems like it almost doesn't matter what it is. They, they'll, they'll turn it into a projectile. And, but we, had, we, we were going to have a pretty quick time with this because we already know it's going 5.2 meters a second when we shoot it horizontally. Right, so we already know it's going 5.2 meters per second. So I'm just going to draw this. There's the dart. It's going 5.2 meters per second. The moment after leaving the, 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 toy, the toy gun here, the spring-loaded toy gun, there's the dart. There it goes. And what did I say? It's 1.5 meters high. 1.5 meters high. So neglecting air resistance, it's a project, this is a projectile motion problem. And neglecting air resistance, how long will that dart be in the air for? Well, as long as it takes anything to drop 1.5 meters. Okay, So how long does it take anything to drop 1.5 meters where the initial y-axis velocity is zero? 
Well, let's see. Y equals V initial T plus one half A T squared. It's starting from rest on the Y axis. It is not, as it leaves the, 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 uh, the, the muzzle, it is not traveling up, it's not traveling down, it's got no Y axis speed to begin with. So it's Y axis motion. Y axis displacement will be one half A T squared. So T will be root 2Y over A, where A is gravitation, right? gravitational acceleration. So 3 meters, that's 2 times 1.5, over 10 meters per second faster every second. Technically, it's a negative displacement and a negative acceleration. Unless we just decide to do this. Then it's a positive and a positive, but either way, it doesn't matter. We don't have a we do not have a negative under the radical either way. Whether we go with conventional, down is negative, or if we flip conventions, literally flip them over, um, flip the y-axis over. Either way, I'm taking the root of 0.3, and the root. This is the time in flight, right? And so root of 0.3 sounds small to me. It's got to be about half a second. Yeah, 0.55 seconds. That dart is going to be in the air for 0.55 seconds. And for that half a second, it's going 5 meters a second or so. So how far will it go on the x-axis? Vx, velocity on the x-axis, times time, which is 5.2 meters a second, or just over half a second. And 5.2, get a real number here, 5.2 times 0.55 is 2.9-ish, 2.86 I'm seeing, about 2.9 meters. That's an M, that's an M, sorry. All right, so um, there it is, a few problems, nice and fast, or at least kind of fast. All right, I hope you guys are having a good day, and have a good weekend, and I will see you soon.